Hello, welcome to the functional groups memorizing tricks video. These are all the functional groups that you were shown on Friday that you had to be able to distinguish between. So I'm going to go through them and give you the tricks that I used when I took this course to memorize all of the different functional groups. I encourage you to write them down, um, maybe on some flashcards, and um, keep track of the tricks. Alright, let's get started. So before I start, I just want to mention that all of these groups that end in nothing are meant to be R groups. And so if you look up what an R group is in your textbook, it should say that it represents a CH um, chain. So it can be any length of chain. It could keep going. Um, but just for the purpose of this video, it would have been hard to put a lot of R's in there. So I just left them as methyl groups. But just know that these could be extensively massive structures with any um, length of chain or anything like that on them. So we're going to start with alkane, alkene, and alkyne. So notice that as you go up, this letter here, A, E, Y, in the word is the only one that really changes. So also notice that A, E, Y is progressing alphabetically down the alphabet. So as you go down the alphabet, you increase in the number of bonds from 1 to 2 to 3. Now I've grouped these ones together specifically because the memorization tricks I have for them are um, kind of all connected. So first let's talk about alcohol. Alcohol has OH. And the alcohol word also has an OH in it. So that's how I remember it. I see the OH, I think alcohol. Um, next we're going to talk about ketones. So ketones has the word key in it, although not directly spelled, it sounds like it. And I think that this looks a lot like a key. So that's a really good way to remember that. Next, we have carboxylic acid, which is a combination of an alcohol and a ketone. So the way that I remember this is that your car needs keys, and you can get alcohol, namely wine, in a box. So I like to think about this as wine in a box. So you have someone here who is drinking boxed wine and now they're trying to get into their car with their keys. I know it sounds silly, but trust me, these things work. Next we have the aldehyde. So this is um, kind of a little bit of a tricky one to memorize, but this is what I've come up with now. This hydrogen is hiding, it's hiding the oxygen. So it's like a carboxylic acid, but it's this hydrogen is hiding the oxygen. And so I like to think of it as it's like a carboxylic acid, except it's trying to hide that it's drunk. So someone's trying to get into their car, but they're hiding that they're drunk, so they're hiding that oxygen on there. Okay, next we have amine and amide. So amine's pretty easy. It has an N in the word and that stands for the N over here. So that one's fairly simple. The amine, the way I like to remember, is that this D, it sounds a lot like amine, first of all, but this D reminds me that there is going to be a double bond. Right there. So that's how I remember between the two. It's pretty easy to associate the word amine with N, and then it's very easy to associate the word amide with amine, so you know that it's gonna have that nitrogen, and then you know from that D that you have a double bond. Okay, ether and ester. Ether is probably my favorite because it's often depicted kind of like a little bit of a bird or a bat, and I like that about it. Um, ether, the way I remember is it's an oxygen with R groups on ether side. So I know that sounds really silly, but ether side. So it's kind of easier to tell that way. And then your ester is the same. It's got R groups on either either side, except that one of those is ketone. So the way that I remember it is if you draw an S really fast, it kind of looks like a double bond. So I know it's a bit silly. I've had students find better ways to memorize these, but these are my ways. So if you come up with something, leave it in the comments for your fellow classmates. That's your difference between your ether and your ester. Okay, alkyl halide and acid chloride. So this X here is very similar to an R group, except in this case, the X denotes 
any one of these elements from group 7. So you'll know these as your halogens. Halogens. And so it's pretty easy to remember if you recall associating the word alkyl with alkyl substitutes, you should be pretty good, or sorry, substituents, you should be pretty good with memorizing alkyl halide. Same with acid chloride. You know that this is like from your carboxylic acid, your ketone. That's what causes this to be acidic. And so here is just the chloride. Pretty simple for that one. Okay, acid anhydride. So your anhydride is kind of like two ketones and an ether got together, except they eliminated some carbons. So I'm just going to show you by eliminating, um, let's take out this, and we'll take out this, and then we're going to move this up here, and this up here, there. And we have magically made an acid anhydride. I took out the wrong ones, but that's okay. It should, it would technically be pointing down a little bit more, but that's okay. So you get the, you get the gist of it. So your acid anhydride is your ketone, ketone, and an ether all stuck together. And so if you can remember that, it's kind of a really big, chunky structure. So if you can kind of remember that, that'll help you in the long run. Okay, and last but not least, your arene, and they are also called aromatics. So if they are a substituent, and I will try and draw it as best as I can, sort of here, if they, <laughs> that was in the wrong spot, if they are a substituent on a chain, it's actually called a phenyl group. So just keep that in mind, I forgot to draw an extra one for that. But in terms of arenes, the reason they're called aromatic is because they're actually really smelly. And I don't know why, but if you've seen the Miss Frizzle episode about, or sorry, the Magic School Bus episode about the, um, the way your nose works and how they're like little sensors that stick into your, the same kind of shaped spot in your nose, that's kind of what this makes me think of is exactly the shape of like a little receptor that would have to be inside your nose to fit in there. So that's how I remember them. You won't get it wrong if you say aromatic, so um, try and associate aromatic with arene because I think this is the preferred name, but I think that will work pretty well. All right, so if you have any more questions, just leave them in the comments or you can email me directly. And uh, I hope this video helped. Thanks for watching.